It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Hey, we've got a great podcast for you today. We're going to talk about retirement variables and constants. We're going to talk about the things you have to tweak for yourself individually, and we're going to talk about the constants we all have to deal with when it comes to our financial plan. Along with this week's mailbag, we've got some great questions. We're going to talk about lazy financial advisors. There's so many out there, how to avoid them, and also, why are you owning CDs here? That's crazy. We're going to explain why owning CDs is not the best investment for you. So stay tuned. We've got a great show. You know, Bob, as you and I have preached over the years, you really shouldn't have what we would call a boilerplate financial plan. I thought we could discuss some of the variables that are unique to your specific situation. And I think the first one is what income you're going to need, right? That varies from person to person dramatically in a lot of cases. Hey, Ryan, I got an announcement to make. Oh boy. Tell me. Retirement runs on income. Uh, yeah. It's like you know, what the world runs on Duncan. Retirement. I like that, Bob. Very clever. Yes, it is. And the thing is, it's really that important. And it's, it's very hard for anyone sitting there right now to figure out how much income am I going to need? Because you know I'm used to getting a paycheck, or if I own a business, eh, I need a little more money. I'll work a little harder, put a little overtime in. It doesn't work that way in retirement. You've got to have a portfolio. You've got to have assets that generate income. That's more important than any other consideration. Yeah, and the one question we get a lot is, well, you know, what do other people like me spend in retirement? And I always say, it just varies so much. Your situation is going to be completely different than somebody else you think is similar to you. You'd be very surprised how all over the map it is, what income needs you're going to have versus, let's say, your neighbor or somebody like that. Well, that's where it comes down to really understanding what you're going to do in retirement, right? You're going to travel. You're going to spend time with your grandkids. You're going to move. You know, There's a lot of things to think about in terms of how you're going to spend your life. But once you have that strategy figured out, then you really need to know where can I find dependable, repeatable income streams? That's right. And that's where you also think about things like taxes, because not all income is created equal when it comes to taxes. You know, we love to make fun of annuities. We do it every week on the show. And the problem is when you get that income for life, Bob, from an annuity, you're paying the highest tax rate on it. Whereas if you have tax-free bonds in your portfolio or dividends that are qualified rates that can make a big difference. You know, right, so true. I'm, I'm coming up to uh, you know Pennsylvania next week. I'm meeting with a client in our Bluebell office. And every year she asks me the same thing. Why did someone take my money that I'd already paid tax on, put it in this annuity, and now I'm getting taxable income? Why didn't that insurance salesperson put me in municipal bonds like you do where I get tax-free income? Every year, yeah, same thing. No, exactly right. I mean, the big question is, right, it's not what you make, it's what you take. So not only do you have to determine how much money you're going to need in retirement, which you can reverse engineer, you know, start breaking down what you get paid now, you know, what expenses are going to go away, what expenses you're going to have. Then it comes down to if I generate enough income to cover those expenses, how much in taxes do I have to pay on that? It gets very complex very quickly. Well, if you cut your taxes, you cut your fees, you're going to have more income. But then the big question is, right, how long do you expect to live? Yes. And longevity is becoming more and more of a problem if we call it a problem, but we're living longer. So you know, determining how much income we're not going to only need today, but how is it going to last me for the next, I don't know, in some cases, 20, 30 years? These are big questions you have to ask. And I know on our projections, Bob, we usually say 90 plus you have to figure you're going to live to just to be conservative. I know you always sit there thinking, Ryan, whose genes did I inherit? Did you get my mom and dad who died young? Or did you get mom's mom and dad's genes who died in their 90s? Well, of course, you know, Pop Pop did have an Anna McNamara on her side. She lived to 106. So maybe you got those genes. So when you make your projection, what do you put it in? 70, 80, 90, 110? That's, um, you know, there are a lot of different variables, right? Just in your particular plan. Yeah. And I think that's where you have to think longer, not shorter. The odds are you're probably going to live longer than your parents did. And you've got to account for income for a much longer time than your parents ever had to do it. It's a big, big variable that needs to be put in there. Well, that's what I enjoy. Every every meeting we do, right, where we, we do these projections. And, you know, invariably, you know, most of the clients that come in are my age or older and they say, come on, Bob, I'm not going to live that long. 
you know, my parents didn't live that long. And we just asked that one simple question every time. Well, what if you do? Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, and running out of money is not a great solution. <laughs> you know, I'll so. tell you what, I don't know anyone I've ever worked with that wanted to be a bag lady, right? It's like, you know, so Bob, if, if I don't take care of this, could I be a bag lady? I mean, think about that. That's like the scariest thing in the world. I don't want that to happen. That's why you need to do these what is scenarios and do them every year. Yeah, exactly right. And then it comes into some of those planned income streams there and coming in. And the biggest one we're all going to receive is social security. And we talk about this every week, but you just can't take social security the same way as everybody else. There's so many different ways to take it. You have to figure out the optimal for yourself. You know, Rob, there are so many variables and it's not just you. It could be your spouse. You have to take into consideration. There's so many different ways to claim it to get the maximum. And I don't know about you. I think more is always better than less, don't you? I mean, I think that's a good rule of thumb, Bob, to live by when it comes to your retirement planning. Yes. And if you end up taking it earlier, sometimes it end up being more if you're able to invest that money rather than spend it. And same thing with your pension. You have to make sure that, uh, you know, all these things may or may not be available if something happens to you. Your spouse has to be taken into consideration. What happens if that pension is no longer available because you didn't make the right selection? Exactly. So there's so many different variables you have to run and tweak for yourself. And I can tell you the answer that we're going to have for you is not going to be the same for somebody else just because there's so many little nuances. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH. That's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word BULLISH to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone. Gird your loins. Let's find out. So, Bob, we discussed some of the variables that are different for everyone when it comes to their financial plan. But what about the constants that affect all of us, no matter what our specific situation is? And what I think about a lot is just inflation. Cost of living is going up for all of us. So, Rob, you know what I always say? Time passes. Markets operate and they don't care what you think or how you feel. And on top of that, you have inflation, that insidious hidden tax that's going to kick your butt if you don't do anything about it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Well said, Bob. And that's the thing, right? I mean, the the biggest buzzkill about retirement is every million dollars you have today, after 20 years, it's going to be worth more like a half a million dollars. Your cost of living is basically getting cut in half over the next 20 years. That's a buzzkill. You know, I just said it again. Time just passed and the markets were operating while we were saying this. And you got to get off your butt and do something about it, right? You got to make sure that you have inflation hedged portfolio. And there are a lot of investments that do that, but there's many more that don't give you that edge. Yeah. And another way to say that is it's just whatever income you need today, you're going to need more income in the future just to do the same thing. So if you buy like an annuity or you get income for life or a bond fund, the problem is, Bob, they don't account for inflation, which can make them very bad investments for retirement. So basically what you're telling me, right, for, for adjusting for cost of living, for adjusting for this increase in cost, annuities and bond funds are bad. Exactly. Because you know the thing we need to do in retirement is we need to strike that balance between having enough income to meet your current needs, but then again, you need enough income to get through your lifetime. And anything where it's not adjusting for inflation or the cost of living is going to be a big problem for you down the line. So let me be clear about this, Rod. You're not telling me that bonds are bad. You're saying bond funds, the structure, the wrapper. Everybody should own individual bonds because not only does that give you a fixed rate of income, but they also come due where if interest rates do go up, if inflation does go up like it always does, you're able to get a better rate of return on your money. Right. You can reinvest your money. And that's the other part of this equation, Bob, is I don't want just a return on my money. I want a return of my money. And a bond fund just doesn't solve for that. That's what your great Aunt Anna McNamara taught me when she was the treasurer you know, for her uh, division of nuns that, um, you know, hey, Bob, this isn't my money. 
Yeah, it's God's money, and you better make sure I get it back. So I learned that lesson a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, well, Bob, you should never let God down. That's probably a good rule of thumb when it comes to <laughs> investing. The other thing that's a constant for all of us is going to be rising taxes. And we actually live in a period right now where taxes are historically low, which means they're probably going to go up over time. And that's something you need to plan for. Yeah, I mean, why? And listen, we're all patriotic. We pay our fair share. But, uh, you know, as uh, our, our CPA always tells us, you know, render unto Caesars that which is Caesars, but don't give them any of yours. Exactly right. There's so many ways, if you're proactive about it, that you can essentially optimize your tax situation where you're only paying the government where they have to be paid. But if you ignore it, you're going to pay a lot more in taxes than you should. And I think that's the biggest surprise in retirement, that you think your income's going to be lower because you're retired. But when you start taking money out of your retirement plans, which is required by the government, your Social Security starts coming in, your pension starts coming in, you know, all adds up, right? You're actually, your bracket, your marginal tax bracket could actually go up the year you retire. That's right. Especially when you turn 70 and a half and you have to start taking money out of your retirement accounts, as we always call it. Your retirement accounts are a ticking tax time bomb, but there's so many things you can do before you're 70 and a half to start to mitigate those taxes later, just being proactive. Yeah, and you do need to be proactive because a lot of the things that you had me do just in the last couple of years, if I hadn't done it last year, that opportunity has gone this year, right? There's a certain things where there's a time limit where you got to get on this right away. That's why planning is so, so critical because if you sit down and you start to project out what taxes are going to look like in the future, you know, I always say there's little tweaks Bobby do today that are going to have huge ramifications to your benefit in the future. You know, Just for example, we talk about this a lot. But we're at the end of the year here. If you have any charitable contributions and you're taking your mandatory distributions, take those, make those contributions out of your retirement account. That's a huge deduction for you right off the bat. And I'm sure no one's talking to you about that. You know, so many people over the last 40 years that I've worked with, Rye, where we've been able to, you know, adjust their RMD, the required minimum distribution to make it more tax efficient and decrease the taxes they pay on their portfolio by making it more tax efficient. I have clients that are retired today that literally would not have been able to retire if 20, 30 years ago, we didn't make these little tweaks and adjustments that you're talking about. So no better time than right now to get started on these ideas. You know, it's not what you make. It's what you take home, Bob, as you and I know. <laughs> I know that, Rye. I know. I, I love that color green. I know it's your favorite color. That's right. That's right. Show me the money. Another thing, Bob, that's a constant that we can't control, what we wish we can control is market volatility, but you can control the risk in your own personal portfolio. Oh, there's so many things you can control, right? And, and we focus so much on the stuff we can't control. Volatility is inherent in the marketplace. You can't predict day to day whether the market's going to be up or down. It doesn't matter. What matters is how you control the things that you can control. Now, the problem is, you know, it's hard to assess when the market's going up and up and up. And let's face it, it's been a great year in the stock market. And it's really hard to know what your underlying risk is when the markets are actually doing really, really well. And that can be a real problem. It can be a problem. And I know a lot of you thinking right now, you know, I've had that fear this year because we felt it. We've had a lot of calls for whatever reason, the fear of a recession or something going wrong with the economy or China or Hong Kong is so many things, so many concerns. But as you always tell me, right, these are concerns are not certainty. What is certain is how much you can save, how tax efficient you make your portfolio, you know, when you retire, how well you live in retirement. Yeah. And then just, you know, not having one extreme or the other, because the two things we see right now, either you're taking way too much risk and you don't know it because if the market does have a downturn, you're not protected and you can put your portfolio into the stress test. But the other side of the equation is you're so nervous about the markets that you have too much money in cash. And what you really need to do is find that balance between risk and safe money. And most of you aren't doing that correctly. You're right, Ryan. The thing is, you think you have to make a lot of action. It's, it's, it's got to be a lot of movement in my portfolio. i got to make changes all the time. It's probably the worst thing you can do. And I think uh, you told me the other day, John Wooten, a famous coach from UCLA, said it, don't mistake activity for achievement. And that's the yes. same thing with your portfolio. If I hear one more time, Bob, with the election next year, what changes do we need to make in our portfolio? I think I'll cry <laughs> because <Yeah. laughs> if, if your strategy is dependent on what's going to happen next, you know, with the election cycle or something like that, you don't have the right strategy. 
Your strategy needs to be based on your goals, not politics. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our total financial master plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so it's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844-752-6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844-752-6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. It's time for the mailbag. We want to hear from you. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can always email us questions at bbullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we'll answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some good questions. And to help us with questions, we have our man in the studio, Dan Irving. Dan, what's shaking, brother? How you doing today? Hey, Ryan and Bob, doing well. I'm excited for Thanksgiving coming up. I've been tasked by my family with making some pie, and I've been wondering what type should I make? What do you guys think? I mean, first off, I'm impressed you know how to make a pie. (laughs) <laughs> Started there. I would find the best bakery and uh, go find that pie that you're going to make. Pass it off as my own. <laughs> that's a, that's the Bob Payne method. <laughs> delegate, master delegate. delegator, right? <laughs> exactly. You guys are great advisors. Uh, all right, we got some you know. great questions on the mailbag today. Our first one is from Meredith in Sag Harbor, New York. Meredith says, Bob. I've interviewed a few different financial advisors, and they're all very cryptic about what they're going to do with my money. It's like they don't want to tell me anything until I give them everything, and then they'll surprise me or something. Is this normal? What is this, the holiday season? You get a surprise under the tree at Christmas? It doesn't make any sense, Meredith. I mean, you have to know what you own and and know why you own it. And more importantly, you got to know what they're going to charge you. So, right, this is crazy. I see this happening all the time. Where do these financial advisors get off telling people, hey, don't worry your little head about it. I'm just going to take care of you. Bob, why are financial advisors so lazy? <laughs> I mean, that's what it comes down to. This is like the laziest industry in the world. It's 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 a low hurdle to be good at this job. Well, you know, I always say that, right? In the financial service industry, the, the number one criteria is lack of service, right? It's the biggest complaint we get, probably why we're one of the fastest growing firms in the industry, is that we actually tell people what they're going to own how they're going to own it, what it's going to cost, what it costs, what they're doing right now. I mean, it's just, to me, it's just common sense. I mean, there's a lack of common sense out there when it comes to financial services. Yeah. And it's like, Meredith, make them work a little bit up front, you know, make them earn your business. (laughs) It's, uh, you know, all that stuff is great once you get in the door, but I mean, I think it's, it's good to see how that advisor works. And also like, if you're going to give any recommendations for why you should move over, there should be some retirement planning done up front, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. And the thing, and the thing is, you know, you don't want just a proposal on your investments. You want a proposal on your life. You want to know about every moving part. You want a true financial plan. You want a 360 financial portal like we talk about, right, where you can see everything. Everything can be monitored in real time at your convenience, not at the advisor's convenience. Yeah, this is funny because I had a new client that came in and they have a couple million dollars, which, you know, at that level of wealth, you should have some sort of service. And they were shocked when they came into our office and we actually ran projections first. He's like, no one's ever done that for me. And I'm like, well, how in the world do you make an investment plan if you haven't run financial projections? He thought it was like the the greatest thing he's ever seen. And it's like, to me, that's what you should be doing. Yeah, I'll tell you, Ryan, almost on a weekly basis, what we see are event-driven strategies where we see a collection of investments, whatever the, you know, the investment firm is pushing at that time. These are investments that were sold they weren't bought by the investor. You need a process-driven strategy where you find the lowest cost provider of de- delivering that financial independence that we all want. Yeah, avoid those lazy financial advisors. Great answer, Ryan and Bob. Hope that helps you, Meredith. Our next question is from David in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. David says, Ryan, I have a few CDs that will be maturing in the next year. 
I'm worried about what the market will do. So should I just reinvest in more CDs once they mature? No. <laughs> the short answer is no. That is not an investment strategy. You know, you shouldn't be living in fear of the next downturn. You have to start thinking again about building a strategy that's going to get you through the rest of your life. And that has nothing to do with if the market's high or low right now. And I mean, we've talked about this in nauseum. And right now, let's be real. If you look at CD rates, they're very low. You're getting 2%, maybe 2.5%. You're still paying taxes on that. And when you factor in the taxes you're paying, you're not keeping up the cost of living, which, Bob, I call that an anti-investment strategy. Yeah, so true, Ryan. That's really been the real sorrow of this big, booming bull market because a lot of my generation's parents and grandparents, their only investment strategy was buying short-term CDs, you know, six months, two-year CDs at their local bank. And rates have been virtually negative for 10 years when you factor in inflation. And unless they had someone like you or I or, you know, a, a child that cared, you know, all they had to do is extend those maturities a little bit and get a positive return on that money. They didn't know. So there's so many people like David out there who have never been educated or informed. And that's the big shame of this big boom and bull market. No, that's right. And the other part of the equation is you're not buying the market because it's going to go up or down. And that sounds crazy, maybe, but it's about the dividends that it pays, mm -hmm. income. You, as a retiree, you need income. And if you invest correctly in the market, you're going to generate a lot of income. And not only that, Bob, that income is going to go up over time, which is so critical. Well, that being said, though, Rye, David could need some money in short-term bonds that come due to hedge against inflation and to keep the anchor of his portfolio so he can know exactly how much volatility risk he should take in the rest of the portfolio. So, you know... It's again, it, it has to have, you have to have that plan, don't you, Rye? I mean, to really give advice properly. Well, you need to know that mix between risk and safe assets, and it's going to be different for everybody. And you need to determine that based on your plan. Again, not based on the next outlook here for the economy or for the election, like we talked about in last segment. It just doesn't make sense. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so there's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844 752 6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.